So why did Terra Luna collapse? Not totally clear, but I think the better question is, why did it stay up for so long? There's nothing back in it except faith. Uh, faith that this thing would you know, continue to grow in value. I, I've seen some news about like, you know, money getting injected into Terra in order to in order to keep it. I think it's a lot easier to have something that is valuable that where, where the peg is about trying to keep the price down a bit. Uh, but then what happens is once that demand cools off and now the peg needs to work in the other direction, it's very hard to hold something up. And then it sort of goes down, 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 crashes. Do you have any sense for how stable coins unpeg? Well, yeah. So th there are there are two kinds of stable coins. The first kind is what you might call a backed stable coin or a real token. And that's one that's going to be like what Tether at least alleges to be and what USDC, right, Circle, alleges to be, which is that they have a um, portfolio of assets that are supposed to be near cash assets. And if they have like 70 billion of those assets, then there are 70 billion of the stable coins that exist. And that's supposed to be the deal of a backed stable coin. In theory, at least, you're supposed to be able to redeem those stable coins for fiat currency, US dollars, if you demand it. In fact, if you go over to Tether, there's a bit of a ceremony you have to do in order to be able to get that. And you need to be qualified. And that's when they, you hit the, um, the KYC stuff and the anti-money laundering stuff is the redemption process. Basis for their value is there are assets. And basically, you buying a token is you buying that dollar's worth of their assets. Real quick, unlike Ethereum, there is no gas limit on expressing your gratitude. So go ahead and hit that like button. Thank you. The second type of stable coins was called an algorithmic stable coin. This is what MakerDAO uses. This is what Terra was. And the idea behind an algorithmic stable coin is that it's handled by trades and arbitrages with a currency that's paired to it. The stable coin doesn't buy you US dollars. The stable coin buys you Lunas. And you should be able to buy, you know, that the price of Luna is denominated in Terra, which was supposed to be the same as a US dollar. And that's where things get weird, because what is the basis on which that price stays pegged? And they're depending on the market to do that job by saying that basically if the if Luna becomes too cheap relative to US dollar, then people will want to buy more Lunas and they'll sell their Terras in order to buy Lunas. And if Luna is becoming more dear, uh, then they will sell their Lunas to buy Terras. And that's how the prices stay even or that's how they're supposed to stay even. Question is, why do you believe either of these things are worth anything greater than zero? And that's the bizarre part. Because, you know, I, you can tell a story about how those two things should be remain uh, similar in value, but there's not a clear story about why they should remain, why that has any relationship to the US dollar other than being a multiple of zero. And that's where the faith comes in. And once that faith leaks out of the system, as always, if you want to stay apprised of the latest around emerging tech, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks.